and 45. Well, there's five. Okay. How many observations are less than 50? Well, there's 10 that's in this class, and there's a 5 that's in the class previous, so there's 15. How many observations are less than 65? Well, there's the 15 in that class, there's the 10 in the previous one, and there's the 5 in the one before, which gives, gives us a total of 30. How many are less than 80? Well, there's the 15 in this class, the 15 before it, the 10 before that, and the 5 before that, which gives us 45. Actually, you can probably see that how many are less than 95? Well, there's the 4 in this class, and there's the 45 in the accumulation of the classes before. So that gives us 40, uh, 49. And then finally, what we have is we have all of the observations here are less than 110. And like what we did with the relative frequencies, we can calculate our relative cumulative frequencies. Actually, these are relative less than cumulative frequencies. We accumulate up our frequencies. Okay, So relative to the total, there's 5 fiftieths of the observations in this class. There's 15 fiftieths less than 250. There's 30 fiftieths less than 65. There's 45 fiftieths less than 80. And there's 49 fiftieths less than 95. And 50 fiftieths, all of the observations, are less than 110. And then finally what we can do is we can do our percentage cumulative frequencies, which is an accum... Or you could, you could take this column here and you can multiply by 100. Or maybe what we'll do is we'll accumulate up our percentage frequencies. Okay, So there's 10% less than 25. There's 20% in this interval. And there's 10% before it. So there's 30% of the observations are less than 50. There's 30% of the observations in this interval, 10 before it and 10 before that, which gives us 60% less than 65. And you can see then we add 30 onto 60 to give us 90% as less than 80. We add the 8% onto the 90 to give us 98% or less than 95. And finally, we have the 2% onto the 98 gives us 100% of the observations are less than 110. So this is the less than cumulative frequency distribution and it's three different variants. Okay? What about a greater than distribution? Okay, so if we look at a greater than a greater than cumulative distribution. So let's say we want to have a look at a greater than. Okay, so these three columns here are going to be for a greater a greater than cumulatives. Okay? Now with the less than cumulatives, we're concerned with the lower, the upper bounds of the classes. With the greater than cumulatives, we're concerned with the lower bounds of the classes. And the question we really have here is, how many observations are greater than 20? Well, there's 5 in that interval, 10 in the interval after. All of the observations are greater than 20. So here's another capital F column here. Okay? Maybe I'll say this is my this is my less than, and this is my greater than cumulatives. Okay? So, how many observations are greater than 20? All of them are, so there's 50 observations in here. How many observations are greater than 35? Well, there's the 10, the 15, the 15, the 4, and the 1. The only observations that aren't included that are greater than 35 are the 5 in the previous class. So, there must be 45. 50 minus 5 gives us there must be 45 observations greater than the 35. How many observations are greater than 50? Well, there's the 15, the 15, the 4, and the 1, which is the same as the 45 minus the 15 observations that are previous, which gives us there's 30 observations greater. How many observations are greater than 65? Well, there's the 15, the 4, and the 5, the 4, and the 1, which is a total of 20, so there's 20 observations. How many observations are greater than 80? Okay, well, there's the 4 and the 1 gives us 5. Okay. How many observations are greater than 95? Well, there's the one observation in here, which gives us there is there is just a total of there's just a total of one observation that's greater than that's greater than the 95. So there's one observation here. I probably should say here that this is a strictly less than cumulative and that this is a greater than or equal to cumulative. Okay. Then we can do our relative our relative greater than or equal to guys, which is these cumulatives as a fraction of the total. So this represents 50 fiftieths, this represents 45 fiftieths, 30 fiftieths, 20 fiftieths, 5 fiftieths, and 1 fiftieth of the observations are in this particular interval, or are greater than 95. And then finally we could do our percentage cumulatives that are greater than or equal to. Maybe this is less than, don't forget. This is less than, and this is greater than or equal to. 
Uh, so the greater than or equal to percentage cumulatives. Okay. So once again, we're looking at we're looking at what percentage of the observations are greater than 20, 25, 50, 65, 80, and 95. And to do that here, all we have to do once again is this time we could accumulate up these percentages. All of the observations are greater than 20, so it is 100% greater than 20. Okay. Um, greater than 25, there's all of the observations bar the original 10%, so there's 90%. Okay. How many are greater than 50? Well, there's all the observations from here on, except for the 20 and 10, which gives us a total of 70%. Okay. You can actually see that we're taking our previous one and we're taking away, we're taking away the percentage here. Yeah. How many observations are greater than 65? Well, there's the 30, the 8, and the 2, which gives us 40%, which is the same as the 30 taken away from the 70. So that gives us 40%. How many are greater than 80? Well, there's the 8 and the 2 here, which gives us 10%. And then finally, how many are greater than or equal to the 95? Well, there's the well, there's the 2% that are, that are in there. Okay? We could have just taken this column here and multiplied by 100. Okay? So there you go. There's all the different variants of a group frequency distribution that we could be asked to do. We could be asked to do our actual frequency. So small f represents our actual, our actual frequencies. Okay, our actual frequencies. Okay, a uh, capital or small f represents our relative, our relative actual, actual frequencies. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, percentage small f is our percentage, our percentage frequencies. Okay, our percentage actual frequencies. Okay, frequencies. In a likewise manner, our capital F represents our cumulative, our cumulative frequencies. Okay, our cumulative frequencies. Our capital or capital F represents our relative, our relative cumulative, cumulative frequencies. Okay, frequencies. Okay, and our percentage capital F represents our percentage. A percentage cumulative cumulative and I'll just put R E Q here for our percentage cumulative frequencies. Okay guys, uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Okay? And I hope that this video uh, which was showing us how to construct a group frequency distribution and all its different variants, yeah, I hope that this was in some way intuitive and more importantly I hope that this was actually helpful for you. And thank you for watching. Okay, bye bye.